Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. And we are joined by a very uh, special guest, Marty Smith. He's produced in-depth interviews, also vulnerable storytelling, breaking news reporting across every ESPN platform for nearly 20 years. And in almost every sport, including college football, basketball, the NFL, NBA, NASCAR, IndyCar, Formula One, Triple Crown of Horse Racing, the Masters, the PGA Tour, and his 2019 memoir, Never Settle, Sports Family and the American Soul, is a New York Times bestseller. And he's got a brand new book called Sideline CEO. Marty Smith. Marty, how are you? It's a hell of an introduction. Wow. <laughs> uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I'm very well. It's a uh, turn and fall here in North Carolina where I live, and it's just stunning. Nice to be outside and enjoy the uh, fall breeze a little bit. I, I needed an oxygen tank at the end of that introduction, to be honest with you. You did, man. <laughs> Somebody get that man some oxygen. Goodness. <laughs> Sideline CEO, leadership principles from championship coaches. What led you to write this book? I think several things but the ultimate foundation of it I think was I had so many people in my path and my journey who saw something in me that I didn't and they believed in me and they mentored me and or they coached me or they led me <clears throat> to find the best version of myself and I'm, I'm a super nerd about motivation I mean my entire Instagram algorithm is Kobe Bryant and David Goggins I just love that stuff so much and I try to be that type of father. I try to be an instructive father, but one who motivates and one who builds and one who cares while also offering structure, right? So all of that on top of the fact that in my ESPN life, I have the blessing of being around some of the greatest leaders of all time. Nick Saban, Davo Sweeney, Mac Brown, Roy Williams, Tom Izzo, Doc Rivers, Patty Gasso just won her seventh national championship with Oklahoma softball. Kim Mulkey just won her fourth national championship with LSU women's basketball. It's it's a who's who in this book. And mm. so I wanted to glean information, wisdom, tutelage from them, and I wanted to be a vehicle or a conduit to take that wisdom and give it to the public. And I feel like we've really done that well with Sideline CEO. Uh, the feedback is a little overwhelming, if I'm being honest. It's been out since last Tuesday. And I'm so full of gratitude that people are responding to it and, and, and getting fulfillment from it the way that they seem to be based on the feedback. We're joined by Marty Smith, Marty of uh, uh, ESPN for over tw or nearly 20 years. You, uh, you know, these are unbelievable names, like you said. And uh, let me ask you this. So is, do, do, do any of these people have anything? Is there anything in common or maybe one or two things you'd say, you know what? Those are a couple attributes that they all have in common. There are. Um, and that was one reason as I started making my way through the interviews that the, I ultimately wound up with the format that I wound up with. And that took me a long time to decipher, honestly, because I had the title five years ago. I mean, it's a baller title. Sideline CEO it just sounds cool. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, if I interview these folks, I had some fear that there would be repetitiveness with the answers and there is to a degree, but the beauty of it is even though they're similar philosophical thought, they all have such different and unique personalities. Mm -hmm. So they share all of this tutelage in a different way. So I broke the book up into kind of eight pillars. What is leadership, culture, trust, communication and listening, delegation, self-evaluation, crisis management, and evolution. Because all of those, attributes are critical if you're a leader and so then okay how do i put the book together from there well i read a book during covid i was super intentional during covid to be uh intentional about my time with my wife my time with my children and my time away from my phone mm. and part of that was i wanted to read a book every 10 days And one of the books i read was called i want my mtv and it was written in an oral history format. And I went, I mean, it was like 1130 at night when I first started the book. And I shot up out of bed. And Lainey's like, where are you? What are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to work. Because mm. it just, this light bulb went on. Okay, I know how to put this book together now. So 
I wrote it in an oral history format, almost as if all these coaches are sitting in a room or a conference together, sharing their perspectives on those pillars. And it's like, I just wanted it to be very digestible in a hurry. And I Mm -hmm. want people to pull out highlighters and pens and bark it up and remember and carry. And so I feel like we've accomplished that. I love uh, oral history books. I think those are absolutely fascinating. Uh, hey, by the way, your publisher sent me a copy of the book. Do I have to send it back to you, or can we ha- hang on to it? Oh, no, keep it. Absolutely keep it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. I'm keep just kidding. It, read it. What? Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, no, man, hell no. Keep that thing. <laughs> like, give it as a <laughs> I want to ask you, we're joined by Marty Smith with ESPN. Uh, and, and by the way, we really enjoy your uh, your work over there. Um, I want to ask you about a few of these people uh, in, individually. Uh, you know what? You're, you know, obviously we're a we're a Tennessee radio station. We've been a member of the Vol Network for about 25 years. So I'm going to first ask you about uh, Nick Saban. Let's just start there. The goat. Um, he's the greatest mm-hmm. to ever do it, and his self discipline is so so direct that it really it really shines through in this book and, and Lane Kiffin is in the book as well, a former Tennessee ball head coach. And Lane of course was coach Saban's offensive coordinator at Alabama and Lane really stamps home coach Saban's wisdom in the book because he lived it every day too. And Lane maintains that coach Saban saved him mm-hmm. because Lane was not self-disciplined and coach Saban demands that of every single person in his stead. And there's a couple things I love from Saban in the book. The first being mediocre people don't like high achievers Mm. and high achievers don't like mediocre people. Mm -hmm. In other words, people who just don't have it in them, the desire, the conviction, the dedication to dig deep enough to find their best self and have the discipline to maintain that person and continue to grow that person. Like people that do that don't have time for people that don't do that. Mm -hmm. And people that don't do that, want to just tear down the people that do because their insecurities are so overwhelming that they won't. Mm -hmm. And so I love that from Saban. And then there is the be a champion philosophy, which is the SEC or the, uh, the Alabama goals pyramid down there in the football facility in T-Town does not say win an SEC championship. It does not say win a national championship. It says be a champion. In other words, do everything you have to do every single day to find your best self, and that means you are playing to be a champion. You are preparing as a champion, and if you do that every day, then you're probably going to have an opportunity to win a championship. It's an inside-out philosophy. I know you've heard this before. It's process over outcome. Mm -hmm. And I've injected that into my daily walk as a dad. Mm. I don't want to project for my children. I don't want to expect for them. I want to give them the structure and the and the wisdom from my walk that helps them be their best, and then they can achieve at their highest level, which is what I expect as a father. I want them to desire that. And so it's really a life book. We're joined by uh, Marty Smith, uh, uh, very well said. Let me, uh, just a couple of, uh, of others here. Kim Mulkey, and I believe... Uh, didn't Kim uh, Mulkey have a, is it a heart procedure here the last week or so? Is that right? She did. Um, and she's good. She all right? Um, it was a, it it was a happenstance thing. Um, and so grateful that she's good. Mm -hmm. She is such a dynamic personality. She's such a tremendous leader. She is no BS at all. And I love her concept of evolving in the pages of the book. That's one of the the pillars that's in the book is evolution. And she said one of the greatest compliments she's ever received was from her young players now that she has continued to remain relevant, current, and understanding of how young people's lives have changed. Mm. And she said, I consider that to be such a compliment. And if you're a leader today, you have to. It's like Coach Izzo told me, of course, Uh, Some of your listeners may not be sports people. Tom Izzo is the great basketball coach at Michigan State. And he was sharing with me that when he was coming up in Iron Mountain, Michigan, you did what you were told. If your parents told you to do something, you did it because they were authority figures. Same for coaches, teachers, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I was the same way. I grew up in Appalachia, southwest part of Virginia. 
My mm-hmm. daddy told me to do something. I did it. I didn't ask why. I didn't say a word back because I got backhanded. Mm-hmm. These days that doesn't apply. Mm-hmm. And so you have to share the why today. You have to take that next step. And Coach Mulkey uh, said it was such a compliment for her when her players uh, laud her relevance and in, in, in her continual evolution. We're uh, joined by Marty Smith. The book is Sideline CEO, and I, I guess, Marty, they can get the book uh, wherever people buy books. Anyway. Is, that right? is that right? That's right. Hey, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, your local bookstore. Uh, I've, got a, I've, got a, I've got a yep. copy here at the station, but, but I'm going to hold Love on it. to this one. I'm going to hold on to this one. <laughs> Marty, I, I can't have you on. I can't have you on without talking some current football and and really in the time sure. we have. Um, look, uh, it's almost like this is the last season of college football that, as we've known it, and it, it's like the world changes next year. Is it is is that right or close to right? Very right. It's absolutely fair. Um, it's the most transformational time in collegiate athletics ever. When you put, when, when you combine name, image, likeness, transfer portal, conference realignment, television revenue, all that comes with this transformative moment in collegiate athletics, it is uh, very different than it's ever been. And doesn't mean it's worse. Doesn't mean it, it's just different. And <clears throat> what's so interesting to me about like NIL and the portal and all those things, NIL is wonderful it makes all the sense in the world that young athletes can benefit financially from their body of work whatever that is but the thing that's happened is that's not what nil is let's just be honest and call it what it is it's pay for play yep and so with that comes the legislation that certain states have passed in order to get benefits in that arena of pay for play and so there needs to be some governance over all of it. And right now, to me, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, it's the Wild West. And mm-hmm. the SEC is in a very bullish position. Uh, I know that's what you care about, being there uh, in, in the ball network and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Tennessee has one of the strongest brands in all of sport, much less collegiate athletics. But we bring in Texas, we bring in Oklahoma next season, and that only – bolsters the southeastern conference because it's two colossal national brands certainly so marty smith and uh, we got just a couple of minutes left i want to go back to the book sideline ceo leadership principles from championship coaches with a forward by tim tebow uh, of course written by the great marty smith of espn so in all your in all of in all of the time and the effort that you spent putting this book together what did you take from it oh so much um i i I really wanted to drill down avenues for myself where i could make sure that i was the most self-accountable uh most productive most empathetic kindest hardest working most present version of me and this group of people through their amazing wisdom, have demanded some personality shifts for me and some uh, shifts in my daily walk. And I'm so grateful for that. And ultimately, you drill down, okay, what is leadership? What what, What did I write this for? What is it? And it is really, like leadership is not power. Leadership is influence. So through trust of your words and follow through with your actions, because trust is an action word, are you able to influence people to come with you? Can you bring them with you? And especially when they don't believe they're capable of doing it themselves. And all of this wisdom in the book help you like learn, not learn how to do it, but really get great insight into how to do it. And man, um, I'm grateful that that I got the opportunity to be the vehicle for all of this wisdom to get to the consumer level. Marty Smith, Marty, it's a compliment to you that you're able to put this group together, first of all. That that says a lot about you. Thank you. And uh, it's unbelievable. Marty Smith, ladies and gentlemen, you know him, you love him. 
ESPN at Sideline CEO, Leadership Principles from Championship Coaches. Get a copy. Great holiday gift, by the way. Get a copy wherever books are sold. Marty Smith, Marty, great job. Love to have you back sometime. So grateful uh, for the platform. Thank you so much, and I hope you guys continue to enjoy a great fall and a phenomenal college football season. Be well. Thank you. Amen to that. Thanks, Marty.